uh hello there and welcome back to the disc connected and uh hopefully i can get this right twice we are here live with laurent omanzik and he yes. is from wicked vision in germany and they are the creators of in my opinion some of the greatest media releases literally in the world I i'm a huge fan of media books and theirs are top notch laurent thanks for coming on with me today Thank you very much, Ryan, for having me here on your show. And uh, thank you so much that you had so kind words for our media books. Really, I they are, appreciate they are it lovely, very much. Genuinely. Uh, I, I don't think there's anything like this happening in the United States, in in other parts of Europe. They're, they're really not very popular. And then elsewhere, they just go overlooked. And the art is just impeccable. And you guys are amazing. Top of your game all the time. So I, I know that you don't get a lot of global recognition. So thank you so, so very much. And thank you that you uh, give us a chance to to talk about it globally <laughs> overseas with our media books. So Of uh, course. I, I've got quite a few friends that I mentioned that I was going to be speaking with somebody from them. And they said, no, you're not. They, they didn't <laughs> believe that I was going to be able to talk to somebody like Wicked Vision. So that, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, we are we are dudes like you, you know. We are, we course. are not. Uh, we don't wear suits. We are not uh, in <laughs> any high towers. You can talk with us anytime. So, <laughs> uh, so first of all, Germany. How how does it? Uh, I I don't understand how it seems like the physical media community in Germany is so robust compared to other parts of the world. I mean, you get five or seven cover options on some of these films that are getting released. They sell out like hotcakes. How do you guys do it? It's it's crazy. I guess um, it has to do something with the German culture, because uh, as some of you know, uh, all the movies which came in Germany were dubbed. So uh, we have an own synchronization, own dubbing, and therefore we appreciate some movies uh, with with German speakers. So right. it is in our mind this movie is good because this this person is speaking, you know. We like the voice of Arnie and Sylvester Stallone. In Germany, it's the same voice. So <laughs> that makes sense. This is uh, one point. And the other point is um, we have the same history like Great Britain. They right. had the video nasties. And we have banned movies too. So um, many movies were banned here in Germany. There was a law called Paragraph 131, and it's a glorification of violence. And uh, therefore, many, many movies in the 80s were like, oh, this is bad. We should ban it. So all the Italian zombie movies were banned. All the, yeah, what can we say? Brain Dead, obviously, from Peter Jackson is banned. Uh, still banned today. And uh, Friday the 13th was banned. Part 3 and Part 4, which is mind-blowing. I mean, it's, it's for teenagers, right? So <laughs> why, why they ban it? Because uh, of teenagers? Yeah. I don't know. But um, yeah, therefore, uh, many people back in the 80s and 90s went over to Austria, Belgium, Netherlands to collect those movies. And now we have a market where we can say, oh, right, we can make it with the German dubbing. Uh, we can release it in Austria because they speak German too. Right. And uh, you can get all the cover artworks, which movie posters like the German artwork, new artworks or American original artworks. And yeah, they are collectors, so they want to have these movies and they pay high prices, so they are really freaky. But um, <laughs> it's obviously Wicked Vision is not one of the companies who sell them for a high price because uh, yeah. we don't have money, so we can't <laughs> say to other people, hey, give me all your money, you know? Right. We're on the same boat. <laughs> there are some of these uh, releases from over there that are getting these massive editions like uh the, there's a last house on the left release i i think that just came from germany and it's like seven or eight discs and it's it's going for like a hundred plus dollars in the u.s which is crazy like most releases don't come anywhere near that price it, it is wild what they're putting into some of those releases over there oh yeah 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 we we have uh, crazy i can show you uh which came recently out from yeah by all means sure we 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 adore here in germany uh which is really crazy. It's like the complete series of He-Man <laughs> on Blu-ray with so many fucking discs and posters and <laughs> art cards and comics and books. And I don't know. We are crazy here. 
You have no idea how much that is going to piss some people off here. I have people literally every single day messaging me, trying to find out how to get a copy of that. Because, uh, uh, how do you say the, the company's name that put it out? Is it Plyon or Playon? Play on, play on. Before it was Koch, but Americans say Koch, and I think they don't like it. Oh, so. I didn't. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know they no, were it's related. A joke. It's, a, it's a joke that we make here in Germany. So. Yeah, of course. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know they were uh, related to Koch. That that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, before um, they were Koch, and now they are Play on. So they changed the name. Their their site is not allowing for shipments to the U.S. on that release, at least. So a lot of people here are trying to get a hold of it, and. Uh, so we have we have a couple retailers that deal with the distributors over there, and they don't seem to have an answer on if they're even going to be able to get it yet. So it's a it's an interesting one because people are dying to see it. I posted that announcement, and people went crazy over it. Okay, I have to talk with some people. We I think America should get this box right. <laughs> so. Yeah, it it looks legendary. It looks like one of the best releases uh, in animation history, at least like yeah. ever. Yeah, even, uh, even me, I'm 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 a hardcore fan now. So, twenty years later, again, <laughs> nice. It, it looks way bigger than I expected too. The, it looks like a giant cereal box almost. <laughs> For those that don't know, this is a media book, and this is one of my favorites from Wicked Vision. This is Reform School Girls, and uh, as you can see, the back is in German, and then on the inside, uh, we've got a disc in the front. A disc in the back uh, but the the real love is shown between the pages here this is like the special sauce every single release gets a booklet and uh, a lot of people shy away from them because they're in german however we all carry around a smartphone and all of our smartphones you can get google lens and hold it up and it'll self-translate on the fly so that you can read the entire booklet and i don't know how many wicked vision wicked vision media books i've read through that way oh all right. I, I, I had the idea before because you showed Reform School Girls, which I have, by the way, also here on the table. <laughs> which is how that happened. But uh, yeah, the last part in it is English. So it's one of the right. few booklets where we have both languages. I guess we did it only because uh, the people who were interviewed can read themselves. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that was the reason. But yeah. Um, I thought about it. Why uh, shouldn't we make some PDFs in English, which we can send to the Americans? Smart. So, I mean, we have the text already in German, so we can right. translate it to English, right? Yeah, that would help a lot, I'm sure. Interesting. Uh, I know that there are some of the, like the very, in fact, I, again, not did not plan this, but I happen to have one standing by. Uh, some of the, the super premium releases, like this one came from either South Korea or China, something like that. The, a lot of their booklets, they have it in uh, whatever Japanese, Chinese, Mandarin, whatever they're using on the front, and then English in the back, because they know this is going fairly global. And uh, it, I would love to see some media books like that, but also just to be able to download it from your site would be perfect. I I, I have to think about it, because it's uh, maybe it's smart right now and that you told me that you'll read it. Because we didn't thought that any American would read our German media books. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got I got a handful of friends that uh, some of these releases they're collecting every single cover, and it's it's worth it. the The art alone, they are gorgeous. And if you're gonna have like uh, behind you, you have a wonderful display of you know just the things that you're a big fan of. And some of these people, they they proudly display the art on some of these books. And if you've got a movie that you love and you've got three covers, you, you might want to display it. So it's nice to have the option. Oh, thank you, by the way. And uh, first of all, for mentioning that. And um, yeah, you mentioned it right, or you saw it right. Um, I think it's inspirational. And we have love to have some good artwork on the wall or on the shelf. And uh, for us, it's important that we can show great artworks so that's the reason why we we choose some artists who make new artworks right um because you know you know by yourself uh, when you see a great great picture i like all the mondo posters which came out in the recent oh, yeah. years it's something that's mostly uh, most of the times better than the original artwork oh yeah so it's it makes sense that we put them onto a cover and also um we have not that huge output because we 
got mostly 1,500 copies, which is in Germany a huge lot, right. much. But uh, I guess in the U.S. it's not so much. <laughs> it depends. Because... Some some labels are only doing about that much. Yeah, too yeah. in America because yeah. America is huge, man. I yeah, thought. but uh, the the collectors community it's not as big. A lot of people here, uh, uh, obviously, a lot of the stereotypes about Americans are true, and uh, the convenience plays a big factor, like with streaming. So we've lost a lot of physical media fans over the years just to convenience. So unfortunately, Damn. those those that are buying these and really holding on to them and and keeping it alive, it's it gets difficult because when you're only conversing with those in the community, it feels like everybody must love this sort of thing. But in all yeah. reality it's a very small percentage still yeah reality is something that often uh, kicks me hard <laughs> when, <laughs> when i wake up in the morning and see oh damn but um yeah because of those artists uh, we, we we want to um push some artists that they get recognized and known mm -hmm. because they make great artworks and also i would love to have when i get 1500 copies i think it's boring to have uh, 1,500 copies with one cover artwork right. when there are so many existing. And oftentimes we have the problem that there are even more than one cover, which is great, which we had last time with The Man Who Lost, where we made five covers because we're crazy. I don't know why we did it. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, we put them in the booklet, right? the artworks. So um, therefore, people can appreciate and say, ah, you, 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 you dickheads, you know, uh, we love the <laughs> Japanese cover and you didn't did it. And often they say, well, open up your fucking media book, <laughs> wrap it out and look. You yeah. got to read it and then you'll discover it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Most I love of the that. People let it, uh, let it mint condition, uh, put it in a shelf with all the foil around. And I don't get it. I don't get it. You buy this shitty thing to watch it, not to put it on your shelf. <laughs> uh, so we were talking beforehand, and uh, w one of the things that I want to talk about, you you actually brought up a perfect thing that we should discuss first, is the banned movies. Because a lot of people are associated with uh, the very famous laws. So we have the UK video nasties, obviously, like you brought up. We've got some of the, the weird US laws. Like It seems like in the US... They've pretty much always been okay with violence, but then anything sexual, they're like, oh, God, we can't possibly show that. So it, yeah, it's they're like backwards. Me. They're like me. <laughs> uh, with, with the German laws, how, like, how much are they relaxing over the years? How do you feel like that's been changing? Oh, they are relaxing a lot, a lot, because um, they had a new system inside. In the past, there was one person who said, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Everything was bad. You know, even Tom and Jerry was bad, it seems like. <laughs> and um, now they have different people who recognize, oh, well, maybe Friday the 13th is a movie for teenagers. Hmm, let's rate it 16 so teenagers can watch it. If only. You know, and this is happening right now. And also um, this month, we, we, Wicked Vision made history because since 1975, uh, the movie Salo, 120 Days of Sodom, was um not banned but i don't know the english term it's it's called index which which means um you can buy it when you are 18 but you cannot buy it in any store you have oh, to buy it so how do you yeah uh, you can buy it when you uh, go online and buy it over austria or over okay Netherlands. or if you have a store, he can't show it on a shelf. You have to ask him, and then he get to get you in another room. So it gets you know, treated like have pornography. To that you are 18 years old, and then he can like you were buying porn or stuff. Right. You know? Wow. That's and, uh, that's yeah. crazy. And that was since 1975. And all the years is said when people try to release this movie or make it free so everybody can buy it, they say, "No way! No way!" Uh, 20, 120 Days of Sodom is the most violent and uh, movie which is against humanity. You know, it's really bad. And uh, yeah, this year um, I wrote a huge letter. I analyzed their analyzers. So they made many mistakes and I corrected them. And now the movie is free. Wow. Congratulations. After, That's a big you. deal. 
yeah it was it was i mean it was like the the end boss from a video game which he fought and he wins so next time mortal kombat 4 right wow. <laughs> <laughs> i mean you you literally affected like cinematic history for a, a, an entire nation that that's incredible yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It was. And the funny thing is, I'm one of the persons who don't like the movie. <laughs> I, I like I like the the way uh, history is told in the movie and right. the critics against fascism is also very important and awesome, which Pasolini did is, was awesome. I have to admit it. But it's one of the movies I don't watch again. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and that makes sense. It, for those that have seen the movie, they'll understand that. But it, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it was an important piece of uh, protesting cinema. It was something that that was needed there to to get people to see uh, basically the, the the atrocities. And, and when we yeah. when we discuss it and change the course of history, that sometimes that happens through art, and that's important. And now you've affected a, a small chain in that. That's that's incredible, man. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. I think it's more important now than than it was 10 years ago because of the fascism parties in Italy now. So yeah. maybe they are smart and thought, oh, well, it's history. We should talk about it. <laughs> that would be a, a, a novel idea, yeah. Um, so with, with the, the relaxing laws, one of the things to discuss is, uh, a lot of people shy away from German releases because it seems like there's a lot of piracy in the industry. And, uh, oh, I've, there is. I, I've tried to warn people. It's not just Germany. Um, Brazil has seen a lot of it. Uh, Spain has seen a lot of it. And when we say piracy, they're not necessarily copying discs, but they're releasing full movies on a disc without the permission of the rights holders. Right. Right, because um, in Germany, companies like us, we have Turbine Media, we have Plyon Pictures, we have Wicked Vision and many more, Anolis, and uh, we have problems to get licenses from huge companies like Warner Bros. Right. They don't do sub-licenses, they only do repackaging. So if there's a media book in Germany with a Warner Bros. logo, you can guess it, it's a repack. So right. you can buy it for five euros or you can buy it for 35 euros in a media book. That's your decision. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a lot of those titles from Warner Bros., let's say like mm, Out of Justice with Steven Seagal. It's a, yep. it's a great movie. I like it. It's, it's entertaining. But it never seen the day of light here in Germany as a Blu-ray. So uh, there is no official Blu-ray here. And there are many bootleggers out here which there are places where they do on weekends like a flea market with movies, you know, movie market. Yeah. And then they, you see on the table, okay, out of For Justice as a Blu-ray from Spain with German audio, which let you guess, okay, that <laughs> doesn't make any sense, but it's there. And then you can guess it, okay, it's a bootleg. Why right. is this bootleg there? Because people want to see it, which sucks because we are some companies pay licenses to bring official released movies from MGM or Universal. And uh, so therefore we have a huge problem with bootlegs here, which is it, housemade, you know, because yeah. we can do something against it, but like companies like Warner do, won't release anything, which is older than I guess 1980. <laughs> Yikes. And, and a lot of people, they don't really think about the fact that that actually is going to have an impact on a company like you because warner brothers could potentially consider it but at the same time if people aren't genuinely asking for releases because they're able to come across them for you know three or four pounds on the streets why why would they uh ask for warner brothers to put it out if they can get it so cheap so right. uh, and it, most it people didn't to watch know. Out for. so so most people didn't know that's a problem too because um most people don't talk about this topic officially so i'm right. glad that you're talking about it because that was one of the important points in Wicked Vision history that we release all the full moon movies with Charles Band. Wow. Because Charles Band recognized, oh my God, overseas in Germany, Austria, and, and Belgium, they release my movies and I don't didn't give any license. So they are officially bootlegs. So what can we do about it? And uh, my boss, Daniel, said, all right, so we can cooperate. We make full moon Germany for you. 
and then we have official licenses and there are no bootlegs because awesome. if another company releases the same movie as a bootleg yeah we can go to court right right so, is that yeah, and, uh, obviously not to get into details but is that something that you've had to do multiple times uh we didn't have to do go to the court but uh in germany oftentimes it's enough when we say hey guys you know we have the rights i would yeah. watch out if i were you and <laughs> suddenly they came oh no we didn't want to do it it's okay it's fine we just post it on our facebook because we like the cover Ooh. right so uh there's been at least a couple times that a company has announced something and and usually it's it's never a big company like wicked vision or anything like that but it's a very small company that's usually doing something like media books and they'll come out and post something and say hey we have this coming out next year i i've even seen where the labels here in the u.s have said well we have worldwide rights you're not putting that out and then the company oh. still puts it out yeah, yeah, I, I guess I know which company you are talking about. We have problems <laughs> with them too. Is, is is it called Mediax? Uh, that might be one. Yeah, yeah. Um, they often have the problems. They even uh, had problems with us because they told on Facebook that they were releasing a tourist trap, which is a lie, which is obviously from Charles Band, and right. we have the rights for it, so we release it. And uh, I don't know which games they are playing but they do it with so many labels and so many movies yes. um i i get in trouble if i say uh, that they were uh, criminals or corrupt but i let me let me guess how i can say it without getting in trouble <laughs> i heard some people say they were corrupt or illegal <laughs> i don't know that's the internet rumors this is amazing uh i I appreciate the fact that Wicked Vision and, and a few others, it's certainly not just Wicked Vision, but many, many companies in Europe are, are sticking to their guns and trying to make sure that they they have everything ironed out, the rights are there. Uh, there's also the fact that you guys are using a lot of great contributors to do some special features on stuff. And uh, one of the things that you and I were talking about is how many people just don't give the time of day to that. So again, thank you. Special features are an art form in their self. Uh, the fact that your your discs don't come with just the film and nothing else is a, a huge boon for these releases. The the writing in the book is always important. And uh, I, I think more people need to give time of day to that. So what is something that you enjoy about special features? Oh, I enjoy By the way, first of all, I have to correct myself, you know, because Mediacs do have some rights. Not everything is illegal. So Right, right. To correct this one now back to your question uh <laughs> what i enjoy on um special features well in the last two years that i'm working with wicked vision i obviously uh edit all the interviews um, right. which are on the disc and um i enjoy it very much the interviews or some of the making of stuff because i studied film before i was a director of photography and videographer uh, wow, freelance nice. and um i learned a lot from those special features uh, people don't recognize but you can yeah. go to a college you can go to school uh the only way you really learn is do it yourself yeah or listen to people who done it and the only way to listen to people who done it is when you go to i don't know when they have a speech and talking or you see it on blu-ray and dvd and the special features or audio commentary that's the only way you can learn well said. That, that is beyond true. I, I, some of these releases that we've seen throughout the world, they, they are, you know, people complain that they're $30, but some of the, the information that's given in these special features, it's legitimately like film school. And the, the fact that some people are paying thousands of dollars a year to hear the same sort of information, it, it is crazy that it, it is basically archiving the entire art form on these discs so i i think that was a very very good point there yeah it's a, a, f a funny story here um i watched an italian old italian movie and there's a scene um which my boss daniel always says it's it's one of the funniest uh, stories um a person is going down in the cellar and there's uh, he's going from red, red light to blue light i don't know which movie it was maybe above or something and um there's an audio commentary from um, a film study professor who tells, 
yeah, he's going down the steps and now he's entering the dark zone and now it's everything is getting misty and mysterious. And then you hear the audio commentary from the camera guy who told, damn, you know, this fucking light. We had red lights, the bulb <laughs> explode, so we had to use the blue light. <laughs> <So> <laughs> And everyone who's making movies by himself or, or even had the passion for making movies or, or fun stuff always struggles with, um, oh, how can I do it without so many money? And right. what, what if I do a mistake? And believe me, all the movies you see, they are full of mistakes and always, always yeah. had some troubles with money and that stuff. But they found a solution. And always you get the solutions from those audio commentaries. Exactly. And uh, the crazy thing, you know, talking on that, I just showed it earlier. We all have this tool. We can all make legitimately like higher quality films than they could even 20 years ago with some oh, yeah. of those cameras. So it, it's amazing what people can accomplish nowadays. Of course, but uh, you have to want it, you know, it's it's completely willpower. That's true. <laughs> very, very true. Uh, so, uh, Laurent, your your background. How how did you get into film? Like, why why are you doing this? Oh, that's a good question. My parents asked me the question too uh, since <laughs> thirty four years now. <laughs> um, how did I get to film? Yeah, well, well, I can I can blame my mother for for, for films because she went with me every Sunday into the cinema, oh, and I watched uh, all the stuff from Turtles to He Man to Batman, obviously. Of course. <laughs> And uh, I had, therefore, a passion for movies also. And when I was 14, I got my first camera, handheld camera, which was a shitty camera. But I, I did movies with friends, which were okay. They're not Evil Dead, but they were okay. So, <laughs> and, um, yeah, the, out of this grows a passion. So I started for a local TV station, uh, made music yeah. videos, commercials and stuff. And then I thought, well, maybe what can I do with my life? Well, I study. And you know the roots of studying, you know, when you go to college or university, always six semesters. For me, it was six Sylvesters. I didn't understand correctly what they told me before. But uh, yeah, <laughs> then I come into these movies and um, I worked beforehand on by Tour by Media. There was work, I was working there one year. Then I left Turbo Media because I thought, oh, maybe I'm, I'm not good in this, you know. I'm 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 I not have a special specialty in uh, yeah. product uh, management for movies. And then I'm in a, it's called um, Secret Film Club here in Germany, Bujo Omega. They always show 35 millimeter stuff, and nice. my boss Daniel is going there too to this secret. Film club, which is not so secret, is only called secret, but everybody can go there. Right. Um, and he told me that he needs somebody who can edit videos or, or uh, shoot videos for interviews. And nice. I said, okay, I do it. And uh, I said to him, how many people do you have in your company? And he said, I'm alone. <laughs> wow. And he did all the things before me, before 2020, all the media books he was doing alone with uh, only friends who helped wow. him out. Yeah. And uh, then we were two. Now we are three. So we are we are growing. I guess growing is good. Growing is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so what all do you find yourself doing for Wicked Vision now? Uh, myself, my task for Wicked yeah. Vision. Mm, it expanded. It was before. It was uh, doing only uh, editing for interviews. Now it's managing interviews in the U.S. or in England. I have to stay up all night and uh, call people which is annoying for me don't much sleep <laughs> <laughs> because i have a normal regular work at next day too so right um what else do i do um i do the product management with daniel together so nice. we 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 search the artworks and uh, discuss how it will look how the dvd looks what what extras do we get on this disc do we uh, buy extras or license them from the us or do we do new ones this is uh, a huge task for me and uh, also subtitles nice it's, uh, it's probably very good. tedious oh it's, it's it can be boring yeah it can be very boring <laughs> but also very funny because um you know most German, I, I'm, I'm not the typical German, okay? So most German don't speak English in any kind. 
I don't even I do, but um, you're doing very well, by the way. <laughs> th thank you so much. Um, but um, you're lying. <laughs> 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 but um, it's it's it, I oh, I think I did it once or twice that we make funny subtitles which aren't correctly uh, translated, but uh, nobody found it. Nobody guessed. So. <laughs> I think it's funny for me. It's if I, I see them and somebody said in the background, "Hey, Laurent, get over here!" <laughs> and he never said it. But people read it. <laughs> uh, that I mean, that brings up an interesting question. I, I'm curious because one of the things I've been trying to do for some of these U.S. labels when I talk to them is not necessarily on camera. So I'm putting you on the spot a little bit. Uh, but afterwards, when we're just hanging out and and, and you know, right before we go for the day, uh, asking them, how come all these special features, we don't get subtitles on these as well? Do you feel like it is an extensive cost or something that would be so cumbersome that makes it impossible? I think it's uh, it's it's a cost thing because, as I told you, we are only three people, right? Right. So Daniel has nobody else to blame than me <laughs> if something's nothing ha not happening because... yeah. The third guy, Patrick, who's working for us, is only packaging and sending the stuff, which we do by ourselves always, which wow. is crazy. Normally, uh, you have a huge company who did this for you, but we do it ourselves. So, yeah, DIY. But <laughs> um, what was the point with the subtitles? Yeah, it's, it's a cost factor because it takes so much time to do this subtitles correctly you have to write them, read them, and uh, when you have more than one movie on a disc with special features, it can take two, one or two weeks. Yeah, if you have them finally ready, and therefore I guess most of the people say, ah, you know, fuck it, we release it. Yeah, sadly, and and unfortunately that, you know, we were just talking about how important those extra features are. There's a lot of people that rely on those subtitles to be able to either hear uh, you know portions of it because they they're either hard of hearing or they're they're fully deaf or uh they speak a different language or what have you but uh i'm i'm really really trying to advocate for the accessibility and, and that that knowledge is something that could apply to anybody that's wanting to envelop themselves in that art so uh, hopefully someday, maybe we can find some sort of easier way to get it done. Because in all reality, even a company like Wicked Vision, you could probably put somebody full time doing that as their job if they were doing all of the special features for all of your releases. That would take a lot, I'm sure. Yeah, and I get more time if we got somebody who do it. But uh, <laughs> I can tell you, there's no idiot out there who would do it other than me. So... <laughs> It's a lot of data no. entry, and then of course the the timing of it with what's happening on the vi the the movie. That's probably the most monotonous part of it. Yeah, I hate movies um, <laughs> where they uh, have really much dialogue, like Quentin Tarantino. I always hate <laughs> those movies, so I stick around with the the action movies. I like them because you can't, you don't need to write boom, bang, boom. You know, it's it's okay. You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> the subtitle could just say like pounding noise or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hitting him hard. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so Wicked Vision, uh, how do I even phrase this? Uh, obviously, you're not the one creating the product itself, but because oh. you're you're curating something that is like the flavor for an entire country, that's obviously, it's it's going worldwide to a lot of people. How What releases that you've been a part of do you feel like you're most proud of? I'm most proud of, um, yeah. I can I can show you two, which yeah, I'm by all means, most please. Proud of, um, which is and, and as he's looking, I will say, if you are in the U.S., some good places to keep an eye on these media books is Orbit DVD or Diabolic DVD, and uh, other countries uh, like, especially in Europe, you can get them for Wicked Vision for for a lot cheaper than we can get them in the in the u.s uh, because shipping charges are not nearly as exorbitant no no <laughs> you're right uh yeah the i'm very proud of this one night porter mm. which um was a very important movie for me and uh daniel make it happen so we can share the rights with Kino, who were the original right holders we, yeah. we wrote them and told them you know you want to make a vanilla disc 
only with a movie. Let's do a special edition with interviews because we have the context to the director. She's she was very, very cool. Eugenio Arcolani, which you had on your show. Yeah, he made the interviews for us in Italy. So thank nice. you again, Eugenio. Grazie. <laughs> and <laughs> and yeah, uh, this is something I'm really proud of. And even the artwork from Jill, you know, it's, our it's artist nice, Jill yeah. Frank from from Belgium. So I have to greet him. Gufadame. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, which was, um, I guess, Flandern for Goddamned. I don't know. <laughs> this that is works. One, yeah, this is one thing I'm proud. But the funny thing was, uh, we couldn't use the original German artwork. Uh, we were not allowed to do it because uh, Liliana Cavani, the director, said, no, 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 I don't want her naked on the cover. I did that in the 70s, but that is not allowed anymore. So we told, okay, you put it in the bootleg. Nice. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we don't get monetized anymore. You should censor this shit. I might have uh, to. <laughs> <laughs> the second one I'm very proud of is uh, the Black Cinema Collection. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for mentioning this because there's a. I think there's a volume two about to come out, right? Oh, you got it! You got it! <laughs> just, released, just released right now here, volume two with Cotton Comes to Harlem and many more. Yes. And, wow. um, yeah, I'm very proud of it because um, in Germany, all of this uh, black cinema movies. I don't call them black exploitation because I hate the term black exploitation because nobody was exploited at that moment. Right. They did. They get paid or. I guess exploitation is what they do now with YouTubers. <laughs> so, um, but it's it's awesome to see the history which which was uh, founded, like yeah. with movies like Cotton Comes from Harlem, uh, goes over to In the Heat of the Night, where where Sidney Poitier is slapping Incredible. back a white person, which is yeah. awesome in in film history. And then you see the evolution of all those movies, and it's so cool to see it now. Like 50 years later, you recognize, oh my god, the movies are so important for film history. Yeah, that, that's I'm so glad you, you shared that. I uh, I shared, oh gosh, it was probably about three weeks ago. I shared that that was coming out, and I had so many people like, Can I still get volume one? Where Where is this? I want this, and I'm, I'm just glad that those are out there and accessible for people because it's genuinely it is important to shine a light on that too. Yeah, it, it's you can order it on Wicked Vision if you search for it. Write us, we can manage something that you get it. Nice. And for all the people who don't like to have slaughter in a Scanavo case, because these are Scanavo cases, they are not the normal Blu ray cases. We have, don't yep. have Blu rays. So, um, good. If you don't like slaughter in this edition, uh, we have a solution. <laughs> you can buy slaughter in a media book also. If you want. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. But yeah, and the last one I'm very proud of, because that is for me personally history, was uh, The Man Who Loves. Great um, film. We did Great. a complete reconstruction of the German version, which was lost since 1939. Wow. So uh, we um, managed to get the original text, which was written in German. Uh, the uh, the history behind this is uh, obviously Conrad White is in this movie, yeah. and Conrad White was on the shit list of Goebbels in Germany from the Nazis. So everything what what was with him, obviously, in Man Who Loves was one of them, was destroyed. Jeez. And we had the chance to reconstruct it for the first time, as close to as it was in the cinema. Obviously, with the American master and not with the European, because. Uh, silent movies always had different um, versions. Of course. So because of the print, you know the history behind it, because uh, they shot the movies with two or three cameras and the roads that are not so good goes over to Europe and the best one were staying in the US. And because Universal did an awesome job with the 4K restoration, we used this one and um, made the German um, subtitle. Uh, no, it's not subtitles text titles which yeah. were in german uh, and based on the american version and wow. we found the text the original text which was used in the 1929 version here in german cinemas because of a collector who had it in his cellar wow yeah 
That's incredible. So, h- how did you find out that they had it? Were you in contact with this oh, person? I, I I called every everything here in Germany from Bundes Archive, which is um, an archive from from uh, Germany where they have all the prints and um, posters and stuff, which obviously some some of the stuff get archived here in germany right and um yeah nobody has anything but the woman who's working there told me um laurent i have your uh, i have your mobile phone number uh i look what i can do i will call you 10 minutes later she called me and said yeah you know i found somebody who has something in his cellar and ah uh, i send it to you wow and then we had the original sensor cards, which is called sensor cards, which uh, had the text and also the information um, which part of the film roll should be cut. Wow. So uh, obviously the movie was censored in Germany because of nudity. So we had back then we had the same laws as America. Violence was okay, but nudity right. not. So yeah. So for That's... the first time, uncut in German. Uh, yeah that is incredible that that is an amazing story i i'm so glad you shared that 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 film first of all for anybody that hasn't seen it seek it out uh obviously if you are in germany get this wicked vision version but uh in the u.s the uh the definitive releases from Flickr alley they do a great job on these older releases and it looks it looks immaculate that, that 4k yeah, restoration awesome. is genuinely incredible it's awesome, and for all, uh, the reason for me was I want always wanted to see where's the uh, uh, history of Joker from Batman coming from. Yep, and this is the movie you have to see when you want to know where the Joker is coming from. So obviously, yep. we had to release it with Wicked Vision. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Uh, gosh, and by the that... way, we did it. Uh, the restoration, uh, uh, the reconstruction, we did it here by ourselves on our home computers. We had no company who helped us or anything. That is legendary, and and that is a testament for you know a lot of people question uh, how much can I do myself really, and obviously oh, you can you can do there. you can do if you want to. There's always a way. You guys are discovering that all the time. It seems like that that is amazing to hear, man. Yeah, like uh, we got also great fans and good help because uh, we got help from somebody in the US or also a YouTube channel. I apologize i don't know the name because daniel did the product management for stick but uh he he had the lost uh, tape from from the director's cut of stick which was only aired once in bbc in the 80s oh geez and was also in lost media and this guy had the tape and we released it we, we wrote him and he said to us oh of course i send it to you so uh, i think stick from us i have to look something completely damned wrong it's um yeah yeah it has yeah gator gator mccluskey is the guy and he provided us the director's cut for stick so this is the only version where you have both versions on on a blu-ray jeez that's that's fantastic and that's that's the crazy thing about physical media is you know a lot of people obviously we're all collectors that that are watching this most likely but uh the fact that we're holding on to this stuff eventually some of this could be lost media and there are literally probably thousands of people in the world that have something that is incredibly rare and they just plain don't know uh, a lot of the restorations that we're seeing they are found in somebody's closet or their cellar or it's the last version of something because especially in uh you, you know you just brought up bbc they, they are known. They were like one of the worst offenders for just filming over what they used to have and erasing it forever. Yeah. So uh, even, yeah, ge- the- even German companies, like we have Radio Television Luxembourg, RTL, and uh, oh man, they, <laughs> they don't archive anything. You know, you ask them, do you have this dubbing from the television you, you aired in the 1990s? And they say, hey, come on, dude, we don't have anything from 1990. What are you <laughs> thinking? <laughs> It's so sad. I mean, there's so much that uh, we we won't even know what we've lost eventually. It's crazy. Yeah, that, and lost media is a is a really hot topic, which is something that we always want to yeah, fight against. It. We we want we want to archive everything that was out there. So this is something that we want to achieve with our releases oh, yeah. to find everything that's out there and we appreciate every help that we can get from fans without fans 
we don't have the chance to make such great, right. obviously, releases. It's a good point. And uh, a lot of the companies that are doing the, these wonderful releases throughout the world, uh, one of their main missions is archival. And, and the way that we are saving these things is super important for future generations. Their, their stuff... I mean, even just the, the story behind the man who laughs, it, it yeah. is more timely than ever to discuss why it was lost, to discuss why the original was gone. And nowadays, I mean, that, that can be something that shines a light on the totality of censorship. It is a, it is a, a, an act of protest art just to put that film out uncut because it, it shouldn't have ever existed because somebody tried to rid the planet of it. And and you see, this uh, this shit isn't made up. It's, it's, it's a topic which is to this day happening if you look to star wars or if you look at, at all the disney stuff which oh, yeah. they do on disney plus and the original they had on vhs or dvd yep. and they are starting all of those changes and i guess if you don't work against it you wouldn't have the chance in 10 or five years to see them ever again in an original version as they were mentioned to to be seen you know exactly there's you bring up a good point. There's a lot of these, uh, especially it's, it's happened with TV a lot in the U.S. As some of the shows, they've had something where a creator changes their mind. Oh, maybe that was offensive and now I want it gone. And just like that, it's gone from streaming. But if they had previously released it on home video, people across the country, they still have that version in the way that it was aired. So, yeah, it's it's important to support that sort of thing. And if if you want the uncensored version, you can't rely on streaming necessarily at all. Yeah. Because in streaming, you don't have the chance to, to you have to get what they get. Uh, you have to take take it or leave it. That's the system right. from, from video on demand systems like streaming. But uh, in those cases with the releases, I think it's always good and great to see, like, for example, the Zack Snyder Justice League or the Joss Whedon's Justice League. Right. It's so cool to have both releases on Brule so you can check them out. Which one? It's true. Is cooler or which was mentioned which is both uh, the same stuff i think it's awesome to have this chance and if they only would do it on streaming all right okay you can see it for 10 years then hbo max says okay we're going down we don't have enough users who are watching us and the movie is gone uh warner brothers is the perfect one to talk about right now because they are just pulling stuff left and right and and it's it's dangerous i mean there's certain things that uh, if we lose it, it can affect a, a lot of, uh, you know, political references. It can affect societal references. But beyond that, the hard thing that they never really acknowledge is that for some of these releases, they are the life's work of some of these people. So somebody literally, uh, you know, we were just talking about Combat Shock when uh, Buddy Giovinazzo put that out originally. He he wasn't able to do like big budget films or anything like that. We We were discussing this beforehand, how he filmed his backyard and and when you lead up to that that is that is taking the snapshot of somebody's life that he put all of his saved money into and if if somehow that was just immediately pulled from the planet you're invalidating his his existence up to that point it's crazy yeah, yeah that's that's crazy completely i think yeah. also i i don't know i i, I guess it's it, it's also very important by the way Warner, if you're watching this, call me. <laughs> I, I, can, I can tell you how we do it. You know, we make the disc for you. You have to do nothing and you earn money. What's wrong about that? I so really <laughs> wish they would open up the doors because that like that uh, that nice guys I just showed, that big one, yeah. they only allow for the, the repackaging of the disc there as well. And I can't imagine yeah. if, they, if they let them do special features, people would pay a lot of money for some of those maybe. Oh, yeah. Think about it. If you would do a media book with Gremlins, re not a repack which is coming out here in Germany, but a real media book with new extras, with the actors yep. who can tell 40 years later how they think about it, that the movie doesn't make any sense because they're getting water all the time because they're running through the snow, right? But <laughs> I think it's, 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 it, that would be awesome, you know. But as I mentioned, what I wanted to tell you before was... Um, uh, the movie Wolfen. You know the movie Wolfen? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, in Germany, there's no release of this movie. And this sucks because I think for film historians, it's completely important because right. the movie came out before Predator and has so much Predator in the movie. Yeah. 
same guy who made the music i guess i think it's james honor the music style is completely the same you have the visual styles from from the wolves like the predator i mean come on you 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 got to get it out here you yeah. know it's, it's rewriting history basically yeah that's man, man i i, I love discussions like this because so many people don't don't acknowledge the censorship that's still out there and it's so much more than you think it, there, there's so many even little things and it's not it's not even necessarily like deleting an entire show from a streaming service but even a, a few seconds of a scene because it was done a certain way can totally change the context of the show and what the the original creators meant and a lot of people they'll they'll just never notice it because now that's just how it is that's how it exists in my streaming service we have uh, we have a good example for this here in Germany, but um, this was never released. It was only in the cinemas in the 50s. Casablanca, the original Casablanca, it came out 10 years later in Germany, obviously because the Germans were the bad guys in the movie. <laughs> and um, after Germany was taken over from the Americans and Russians in the 50s, um, and it was a divided land, uh, they told okay we can bring it up in the cinema but we have to change a lot so all the nazis were cut out and ingrid bergman and the other guy who were um refugees they um don't run away from nazis now they were physicians who have uh, the code for a bomb you know so so they changed the complete plot <laughs> and this is only for you you have to imagine this this was 20 years in the cinema Right. And in the 70s, uh, a German television company called ZDF, I guess, uh, they told, ah, well, let's bring the original out with a new dubbing, a new version, which how the film was meant to be. And so this is a curiosum which is floating around here in Germany because some cinemas show the original uh, cinema copy with wow. the old uh, version with the physicians. <laughs> so this is a rarity, I guess, which should be also on a Blu-ray for, for film historians because it is, as I mentioned, this is history. This was done of, of, of purpose because of right. the Third Reich, you know. Crazy. Yeah, that would be great to see on a release here in the US, but I'm sure that'll never happen. Ne will never happen because Warner. <laughs> <laughs> it always ends to Warner. <laughs> Uh, so you talked about going to the cinema a lot with your mom every Sunday. I'm curious, yeah. what are what are some of your earliest movie memories? Like, what are the ones that were really solid for you in in, in your childhood? Uh, Jungle Book, because it was the first movie I slept. Um, seriously, I I never seen Jungle Book. I was in the cinema, but uh, after five minutes, I, I guess I was too tired. It was late. <laughs> <laughs> it was late. I was working. I was three years old. You know how hard life is. Oh yeah. But, <laughs> The the greatest memories I have is uh, Ninja Turtle three, because uh, for me as a, as a kid, and now you see my eyes are going up. I, they were re the real thing, you know. It was not animatic. Right. It was the real turtles. You can you can touch them, and they were real. So this was amazing for me. Obviously, Super Mario Brothers, the movie. I know it sounds weird, right? But uh, guys. I have a Mortal Kombat poster in the back, so don't ask anything. No, it's, it's perfect. Uh, I, it's honestly, it's a really fun movie, even now. <laughs> yeah, even so, this one is awesome. Um, but, yeah, um, yeah. I, I guess these are all the the uh, the movies I, I grew up with uh, because I I have a five year old older brother, and when he wanted to go to the cinema, and my father wasn't at home at that time because he was working. Um, I don't know the English term for that, but he was a lot traveling around yeah. the world. And he wasn't often there. So my mother had to go to the cinema with my brother and I had to go with them. So <laughs> I saw stuff which wasn't for my age, but it's okay because I was there. And um, and now yeah, you're I an expert up. in it. Now, now I'm an expert or you can say a freak or a, a mentally disordered person who, <laughs> who watch too much stuff. But uh, yeah, that, that, that grow my passion for, for movies. And also I'm a huge comic and video game fan and uh, all combined brought me always back to movies because some of the comics were inspired by movies. Yeah. Obviously, as I mentioned before, Man Who Laughs and Joker – and also video games are inspired by movies. Let's All take Mortal Kombat. It's Bloodsport. Yeah. That's, that's uh, a good point. Uh, 
so I guess these are all the, the memories I have. And now with Ritke Vision, I have the glad opportunity because I was working at the video rental stores when they were dying. <laughs> so I had the fortune to yeah, uh, work there for one year before they were closing. Nice. And so I, um, I'm completely into this VHS and DVD era. And uh, with Wicked Vision, I can now real life uh, uh, do a second life with those movies, you know, That's which great. I appreciated as a kid and I, I rented often. Now we can release them like Highway to Hell, which was a movie I loved. It's a fun movie. Yeah. It's a very fun movie. It has a fun uh, cast. I mean, the cast in the movie is awesome. Ben Stiller is in it. Who, should, who had no? <laughs> uh, you brought up the Secret Movie Club, and I, I'm obviously not a part of yeah. it, but I got to ask, like, uh, what are what are some of the best films that you got to see on 35mm there? Oh, the, the rule of the secret... This is the Secret Movie Club by Omega. Nice. But <laughs> now uh here yeah, this logo i guess is uh, it says everything but um one of the rules of the club is you can't mention the movies that you saw oh. I, but i can break the rules in, in some kind of way and tell you which movie it is and you can guess which movie it is sure so um wow which was one of the best movies i saw well there's a guy <laughs> he runs all the time half naked um, through the jungle, lost his uh, <laughs> photo device and gets really mad and binds a red thing about his head and uh, shooting wildly <laughs> <laughs> and um, doing a hot barbecue party in Vietnam. Uh, I guess you know which movie I meant. <laughs> oh, man, that is the best description of that I've ever heard. And now I'm going to make people just guess uh, in the comments based on hearing that, Give it the most ridiculous movie that's obviously not that, but maybe close and can fit it somehow. Oh, I'm please, not going to say the title so people can guess wrong. Please <laughs> type Andy Sidaris movies, obviously. <laughs> I love Andy Sidaris. Me too. <laughs> He's so fun. I'll take it to oh, Hawaii. Man. I mean, it's so realistic. I don't want to play Frisbee in the park. Nope. We uh I, I have a Patreon for this uh channel and I've got a friend that uh he lives in St. Louis. I live in Kansas City, Missouri, so he lives about three hours away. And uh he's actually driven driven over and we got to hang out a couple times. Uh he was on the, the Patreon. We were discussing on our Discord one day, and somebody mentioned Andy Sedaris and how hard ticket to Hawaii is le legendary and it's legitimately like a masterpiece. And he had never heard of Hard Ticket to Hawaii or Andy Sedaris at all. And so he said, you know what, because of what you're saying, I'm going to buy it. And he was commenting along as he was watching it. And it was the best experience to see somebody like, what am I watching? Oh, my God, this is amazing. I forgot there was a snake. That was incredible. The entire it was such a great reaction to a movie. Yeah, the Andy Sidaris movies are something, I guess, yeah, when you see them, it's an experience. Oh, it's, yeah. It's like a roller coaster ride, you know, <laughs> if you see seven awesome <laughs> william smith in his best role ever believe me it's better than playing conan's father you know this is shit you have to watch any sidaris movies more of course obviously when i when i was studying i had um, um the chance to do some radio stuff and uh, i choose with a good friend of mine to make a, a radio show called thrash frequency some stuff is obviously uh, on YouTube with interviews with all the conventions we did with stars nice. for, for this radio show. But um, our goal was to show the world the shittiest VHS movies out there, which are only on VHS. And Andy Sidaris, he was one of them a long time. Now, now you can get the Blu-rays, but a long time it was VHS only. That's true. And the, surprisingly, the Blu-rays look incredible. Like, they did a really good job with them. Andy Sedaris does a really nice uh, introduction on I, most of them. And it, it they treated them with a lot of respect. And I'm really happy they did that. Oh, yeah, me too. I was happy I did uh, with Tour by Media. This was my only pro, uh, product I made there because I was only one year there. But I had the chance to make the Kill Squad media book. Nice. Um, which is a really shitty movie and uh, has a really shitty dubbing in German, which makes it so funny because in German they say stuff they didn't say in the English version, obviously because it was a shitty movie. 
but um, we had the chance to, to to make a huge release with all the extras uh, making off of those shitty movies, which you wouldn't get on streaming or elsewhere. But right. uh, I guess this is something, um, as you mentioned, the NDC Darius Blu-ray is looking really good. It's funny that these directors uh, have the 35 millimeters at their home in their garage like yep. they were waiting for us to say oh come on please bring it out <laughs> <laughs> and i think the same happened with andy sidaris maybe he had all this he had a pile of shame in his garage and when a label like us came he said oh yeah do it <laughs> why not <laughs> It's amazing. Uh, last thing, before we went live, we were talking and you said you may have some questions for me. So uh, I think it might be fun for the viewers. A anything that you want, shoot. Uh, anything that might be different as far as the territories go, anything for the films, anything about me, anything about the channel, shoot. shoot uh, I'm an open shoot book. Shoot is an English term for asking, right? Not that I yes, get sir. my rifle here. No, uh, you're not in the U.S., so it's probably a lot less accessible. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. We don't have weapons here in Germany. Oh, man, we're boring. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm obvious. Um, I'm, I'm very curious. How did it come that you recognize uh, media books from Germany and even a label like Wicked Vision? This is something for us very, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, the important thing for me is community. Uh, I've got a lot of friends that are collectors that I only know online. I, I've met a handful of these friends in person over the last year primarily, which has been great. But there's still like 50 more that I would love to meet in person that I've known through Facebook groups or uh, seeing you know people posting boutique Blu-rays from Germany on Reddit. They, they will post in that subreddit or... Uh, you know, the, the name Wicked Vision is, isn't uncommon. It's something that you hear because they also released the film. And when you see that Germany has a release of it and, oh, look, it's region free. Yet maybe I can get it. Uh, it. It's something that people start to seek out. So I did start to find out, you know, can I go to uh, Germany eBay and find somebody who's selling it for cheap or uh, German uh, Amazon? Maybe they, they have something in stock that I can get for not not a terrible amount shipped, still more than I'd love to pay, but not not terrible. And then eventually, it just started like catching on. People around were sharing pictures. Oh my god, what is that art piece? I've never seen that. Uh, and then people were posting on these groups more and more and more. And now, like I even I even run a media book group on Facebook of, of people that can go on there to share news, uh, pickups that they got, buy, sell, trade with other collectors. And just get the word out because a lot of people would love these if they knew that they existed. So I, I've been collecting for years and it just happened to be a, a natural step in the chain to discover it. Wow. You can't you can't imagine how happy I am really Good. now. Because you know, seriously, because Daniel and I, we and, and Patrick also, we we always discuss here because you have to imagine that we are in a very little shitty town here in Germany. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, we have only this bubble, so we don't come out anywhere. Right. And we don't recognize if the people in the US would recognize us anyway. So I ask some YouTubers and send them stuff. But uh, until now, there was no nothing where they mentioned us or make a, like a commercial stuff. So I was wondering, okay, maybe... Maybe they don't want us, they don't see us, they don't get us. But now to hear this from you makes me so happy because, wow, dude, we got under the radar <laughs> and we got to you guys, yeah. which we appreciate the most because you are the, the persons the, these, these media books are made for. Right. So the, the real fans, the real deal. So I, I so really glad. hope more people so take the time to look into them because they are, they are genuinely... And I, a lot of people would hear this and scoff at it, but I, I mean it. These are a, a work of art. Not only did an artist literally create the art on the front, but to put the amount of time and care that goes into these that, let's see, is there anything I can't show? Uh, no, everything's good. Uh, they're, they're such great releases. And genuinely, like this is a really good movie. I, I love this movie. And so to get a nice release of this, this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it might have been like the first good blu-ray release of this film in the world if i remember yeah, right uh, i guess vinegar syndrome has it now released since then yes since then but we were the first yeah 
Yeah, so it, it was a movie that I was genuinely looking for. So when it got announced, it was like, oh my gosh, no way. I have to have this release. So I, I sought it out. I, I needed it in my collection so I could watch it. And then now it's a little more accessible because Vinegar Syndrome put it out in the U.S. But it's genuinely a work of art. And so if if you're interested in any way, please take the time to find them. They, they are beyond worth it. And to support a small company like Wicked Vision and, and make their day when they find out that a collector in the, the middle of you know New Jersey in the U.S. is discovering your work for the first time, that's got to feel great for you. It's It's awesome. It's awesome. And we also like to have, if you want to write us, You can always write me an email. It's law at v w. It's w in English, right? Yes. V? Okay, w <laughs> w v. Um, then a, a line. I don't know the term of the line. Dash. Dash. Wow. Yes. In German, it's strich. It's <laughs> strich dash. Dash is cooler. Uh, so Laurent at w v dash media dot com or dot de and i get the mail and you can write me and um always i'm always fine to write with you people guys and uh, to notice that you you appreciate those and also for for um if you have ideas or something we can make better or changes always good to get critics you know it's you always know I just thought of one more question. Uh, I, yeah. I've asked somebody in the U.S. if they would put these out, and one of the things they said is they think that they're susceptible to damage. Do you guys hear that, like, the corners and stuff are getting beat up very often when you're sending them out? Um, we had problems um, with the... Uh, when we get them from the company who made them, sometimes they are... Um, Yeah, you know, there's a scratch over here or something. Right. But this is... Uh, most of them we can... Um, put aside and don't sell them or sell them as, as um, beware, you know, right. like uh, B stuff. So they are cheaper. If the people only want to show look the movie, they can get it for 10 euros example. Right. But um, we always make sure when we uh, send these packages that you get a huge package, which is so safe, you can't get any damage. <laughs> Because the reason why we do it is we would get fucking angry if i get a package where my movie is damaged yep. because on on the way from from post service you know so i don't want that and i don't want that you have that so we make sure that this package is safe and you can get a lot of stuff when you buy by us so um i don't know if you know that but if you buy in our store you get stickers from canon video which is obviously a hint to all oh, we we worked in the video store <laughs> Or um, if you need something for your beer, to put your beer on, you get some nice. simple stuff with Canon. And also, which we appreciate much and much more nowadays, is um, that we have the artworks. We have cards. And they are always... Uh, do I have some? No, I think... Oh, yeah, I have some. They are signed by, by the artist himself. Oh, wow. That's really neat. So and you nice. get your number and your name mentioned by the artist wow and then you have a personalized autograph that's Signed really cool yeah and that's I, you can tell through all of that that wicked vision is for collectors but by collectors like with that collecting yeah. in mind and somebody that's going to treat it with genuine respect I, i love that yeah of course and um i can tell you if you buy stuff from us We are no company who, who's taking the money and say, ah, now I got the money, you know. <laughs> It doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. It, uh, it's always the same thing. We get the money and um, five seconds later is, oh, great. Let's buy this license and let's right. go over there. <laughs> <laughs> so we are not rich. We make something wrong, I guess, but um, it's, that's the case. I, I think we are nerds and still die as nerds. Nothing wrong with that. And, and that's a that's kind of a popular thing nowadays. I, I think it's popular because but it's funny, I think it's popular because of series like Big Bang Theory. Like the guys from Big Bang Theory, you know, they are all recognized as oh wow, they are so cool, they are such nerds. Let me tell you something. When I was 15 and I wore a Punisher t-shirt at school, I was beaten up. <laughs> I wasn't cool. Thankfully, most people in the US still make fun of the Big Bang Theory because it wasn't that great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is it isn't great right it's 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 a fake 
I don't know how to, to explain it. It's like Stranger it's, Things too. I think it's it's a it's fake. Like exploitation a little bit. Yeah, yeah. There you got it. You should call this exploitation and not black exploitation. Exploitation, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, with black exploitation, I feel like it was only called exploitation because they were exploiting the moviegoers. They they were getting yeah. money out of the people, and they would watch pretty much anything. I know, but basically that's right, you know. And uh, they made it on a on a level where where you can say, okay, now they are going too far. If if you know the zombie movies and Dracula and everything, like, oh, okay, this is what Disney does today, I guess. That's a good point. That's a <laughs> damn good point, especially because they own everything, so they can make a different version of anything that they want, basically. Yeah, they make a horror movie which came out on Halloween and has a swamp thing. In it. Mm, <laughs> is it the swamp thing? I guess no, no. The swamp thing is DC. Yes. It's um ah damn, I don't know. <laughs> Manhunt? No. I, I I Man Thing, Man Thing was it? Man, Man Thing. thing. Um, All right. Uh any any other questions that uh might satisfy your curiosities? Oh yeah, what is um that is a mean question. You you know when somebody asks me this question, I hated it, but I can tell you my my most favorite movie is Casablanca. Don't ask, it is so I have no reason. But <laughs> what is your most favorite movie that all-time favorite movie which you can watch again and again and again and again? I hate this question too cuz you can... see you see it's a question somebody hate. I have to ask them. It can change by the day. Um I think for the longest time, it was Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I loved John Hughes growing up. I thought it was a fun movie. Uh, over the last five or six years, I've really loved Green Room. Have you seen that one yet? Yeah, I've seen that I one. love that movie. Awesome. And uh, Maybe the biggest one, and I, uh, I, I've i kind of discovered this a little more lately. I've got a seven-year-old kid, and so he's finally at the age where I can start sharing the stuff I loved that is almost uh, on the inappropriate side, like... The one I'm about to say, it's got a lot of language, more than I remembered. Uh, but I, like, over the last month, have fallen in love again with Back to the Future. That movie oh. is so fantastical in a way that just speaks to a young kid. And, and yet it was made to fit, like, every taste. And it's timeless. And that's kind of a joke based on the movie. But, I, I mean, it's it's such a great series. And all three are damn near perfect films. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They had a huge impact on us too, because uh, Daniel, my boss, he's a huge Back to the Future fan. Nice. It's a, it has one of the biggest impacts on him and Ghostbusters, obviously. Ghostbusters, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, awesome. You said you had a seven-year-old child. Do you want to show him more movies? When do you start to show him Street Fighter with Van Damme? <laughs> <laughs> What's funny? Uh, I I did like I mentioned I have a Patreon and I, I give them some exclusive videos sometimes and just recently I did an interview with my wife. Some people wanted to ask her some questions and one of the questions was, "What do you think is going to be the first R-rated film that you show your kid and when do you think will be the good time for that?" And it sparked like this interesting discussion because I think mine was Halloween and I was eight years old and. I mean, he turns eight in two months. So are we getting close? But, uh, you know, it's it's a tough question because it, there's so much that has uh, changed. And, and with the way that the Internet is there, people have access to a lot of things a lot younger. So it, it's kind of a, a dicey thing to even start to discuss because they may have seen way worse things. And you're like, you can't watch Halloween because they showed they show boobs for three seconds. So you can't possibly see that. But. I, I don't know. It, it's a tough, tough question to break through there. Yeah, of course. But I can, um, I have an advice for you. Sure. A really good advice because, as you know from my name, I'm half Belgium, half German. So <laughs> in Belgium, we have another rating system. Uh, the highest is 16, and all the horror movies are at 12. So they were shown at a time where you shouldn't watch the thing, you know, when it's 7 p.m. <laughs> it's not a normal time to show the thing in Belgium. Right. It is normal. So my own experience was, and I have, I had a great grandfather in Belgium, a really great grandfather, but I was four years old and he wanted to show me some Halloween movies, and we watched the thing, <laughs> which was obviously wrong. 
<laughs> and um, it, it stuck in the back of my head, and I was so so scared of everything. And my mother came in and obviously saw the television where the dogs exploding, like uh, there's a thing coming out of the dogs. She looked at my grandfather and said, "Do you know that you have a child next to you?" <laughs> Should I explain to you that he shouldn't see this? And my grandfather said the golden words, "Well, it's his decision. He don't, doesn't have to see it. He can stand up and go." <laughs> yeah, it's all about consent with everything. I, yeah. uh, to a point, I kind of agree with that. Yeah, I, I too, I too. So, um, but uh, yeah, I want to be. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a tough guy. I can, I can see this. And we went every year to Belgium on Halloween. And the next year, he topped it. He showed me the fly. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> and um, then I was through body horror. I, I don't have any um, passion with horror movies anymore. I was like, oh, come on, dude, go away. <laughs> Let me see those movies where barbecue parties in Vietnam were made. <laughs> All right. On barbecue parties, I think that is a perfect note to end on. And uh, I, I just humbly want to say thank you. I, I know that this uh, it, it sounded like this is not a common occurrence for you to speak to many people from the U.S. on, on a video like oh, no, this. It's a, it's a weird pleasure. And thank you so much. And um, thank you for, you know, that you, you, that you had the time to share this with me in all your, your history, my history and my bad English. And um and I'm so so thankful for everything, you know. Uh, in the future, when there's big releases coming out from Wicked Vision, I would be thrilled if you would want to come back on and highlight them, uh, maybe show them off. Anything that you want to do to share your your company's passion with the entire world, because Ryan, it's amazing. Anytime, anytime. You have my number. You can call me up anytime you want. My casa, su casa. If you want to come to Germany, let me know. We have a place I, I'm here to stay. dying to come to Germany, genuinely. <laughs> if you want to come, uh, you have a place here to stay, and then we can watch stuff together, like Back to the Future. Back to the Future and Vietnam barbecues. Oh, <laughs> of course. But I have to mention vegan, but if, if it's not a problem for you. No, uh, no, we're, we're good. Uh, all good, right, good. everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, please check out Wicked Vision. All the links for their company, for the some of their amazing releases will be in the description below. I, I will be trying to fill your minds with this because it is important. It is good work and it's art that should be shared. So again, thank you for your time. And uh, hopefully we'll thank talk you. soon. What? 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 Hopefully we'll talk soon. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much, Ryan. Thank everyone out there who is supporting us. And uh, I can't say thank you enough for all this. And you made dreams come true. And we hope we make your dreams come true. And Ryan, I'm very, I have so much fun with you. We should talk more. <laughs>